What's up, guys? Welcome back to another... I was about to say Tuesday evening drive. It's Wednesday. So I thought I'd switch things up a little bit. Really, I had to. Like, just the way things worked out with the schedule, had to make it Wednesday. And I figured, you know what? This might be a little fun. It might be a little fun switching things up. Now, really quick, I have my lapel mic upside down. I was reading the instructions, and it said try having it upside down see how you like that like trying a bunch of different positions so hopefully it sounds okay like i noticed last video even with the the pop filter whatever you want to call it even with that on it was it felt it seemed like it was redlining a little bit still so hopefully this is better we'll see but first of all i have to say i just went to <laughs> i went to a lot of people were asking about this so i figured i'll just address it I went to see Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F yesterday, and oh my goodness, I loved it. I loved it. So good. Like, I don't know. How long is this? I don't know how long Dragon Ball Z has been going. I think the whole series has been going, like, I don't know, maybe almost 30 years. I could be wrong, but, like, with... I don't know, like with the technology, with the way things have changed, like they're able to put out such an amazing product. Like visuals looked amazing. The story was great. Like it had a lot of really great humor too. And the cool thing about it was like, you know, everybody in the theater watching loves Dragon Ball Z. So whenever something happened, like something funny or, you know, something crazy, like there were huge reactions, like something funny happened, everybody's busting out laughing, like something crazy happened, people are reacting quite like drastically and it was just, it was just a really cool, a cool experience there knowing you're with a group of people that all have the sh same interests and you just get a lot more like reaction from the viewers than like just a, a standard normal movie so that was really really cool I went with my dad brother and my brother-in-law and we just had a really really good time so if you haven't seen it I definitely recommend it if you're into Dragon Ball Z I really think you'll like it um, but before we get into the questions I am almost at the post office I'm gonna check the PO box I just checked it like a couple days ago so there might not be anything in here but I'm just gonna check it just in case, because this is what I do now. During these drives, this is what I do. I check the P.O. box. So I'm gonna check it, and we'll get right into the questions. Okay, nothing in the P.O. box, but like I said, I just checked it a couple days ago. But, but actually, question number three had to do with this, so let's just get right into that one. It was from Farmer Jason, and he said, when are you gonna do the video where you open the P.O. box stuff from people's gifts? So I recorded it. I recorded it actually I think I recorded it Tuesday yeah no Tuesday's yesterday when did I record this maybe I recorded it Monday yeah I recorded it Monday oh no a train's coming okay well we're gonna sit here in front of a train for a minute so I recorded the video Monday and I was trying to upload it Monday but by the time I got it done I was already doing a recording with some other people and it would have been like 1 a.m. by the time it would have gotten up. So I was like, okay, we'll just do one video for today and we'll put the P.O. Box video on another day. So I wanted to do it yesterday, couldn't do it yesterday. Wanted to do it today, can't do it today. And then I want to do it tomorrow, possibly tomorrow. So it'll be either Thursday, tomorrow, or Friday, I'm thinking. Uh, there's still a chance it could be Saturday, but I'm thinking maybe, maybe uh, tomorrow, Thursday, or Friday will be the P.O. Box opening opening mail video. And guys, I don't want to like hype it too much, but I had a lot of fun making it. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Like, I don't know. Oh my goodness. This train is stinking slow. <laughs> oh, my timing is really bad. Oh, no. Probably gonna be late for the stream again. <laughs> okay, another thing. Um, okay, next qu <laughs> next question is from uh, Frost Stops. He said, "How do you, all caps you, so me specifically, how do you weigh out the risk versus reward when it comes to starting new projects?" I think that's a great question. 
So how do I weigh out the risk and reward with new projects? So like, okay, it all depends. If it's a small thing, you know, the process is very quick because if it's not like a big decision, you don't want to spend a lot of time on a big decision. For big decisions, okay, this is this is how I do things in my mind. Like, I tend to overthink things a little. And if it's a big decision, I will think about it on different days, on different parts of the day, when I'm feeling different things. Holy cow, the train's getting slower. <laughs> so, have you ever like really wanted to do something and then like another day you realize that was stupid. Why would I want to do that? That's very, very stupid. So that's why with big decisions, I think about them in different circumstances when I'm feeling different things. Like sometimes I've had ideas where in the morning I'm like, oh my goodness, I need to do this. This is like a great idea. And then like by the end of the day, I think about it again. I'm like, that's the stupidest idea I've ever had. <laughs> but that's why, that's why when I'm thinking about like, a big decision or something that could make a big impact I'm like okay let's think about this in different circumstances so first thing when weighing risk versus reward I think about the reward or what uh, what it is that you're going for what the goal is if it's something you really really want doesn't matter what time of day what you're feeling you really really want this you think it's gonna be beneficial for you it's gonna be beneficial for other people you really want it that's huge. If you have the motivation, like you'll do, you can do um, whatever it takes to make that happen. Um, but you got to weigh the risks out. So then when you're looking at risks, something I think of, if it's going to affect like my health negatively, no. If it's going to take t a lot of time away from something else that's important, got to figure out how much time, if it's worth it. Now, I, I was thinking about this and I was realizing a lot of risk that I think a lot of our decisions are weighed out by are is the risk of people thinking you're stupid. And really, if you can get over that and not care whether or not people think you're stupid or just don't care what people think you're going to do this, um, then you can get over a lot of stuff and you can do a lot of things that you didn't think possible. And it's not easy. It's not easy because we care about what people think. But it's something that's really helped me. Like in my videos, I act stupid a lot. Like watch my live streams. I do a lot of stupid, crazy things that people think, hey, this guy's stupid, you know? But I just gotta, I just get over that and say, I don't care what people think. My goal is to entertain people and make you guys happy, bring a smile to your face. And if that makes me look stupid, I don't care. You know, it's worth it. So if you can get over, if you can get over like, oh, you know, I want to do this, but people might think this or people might be, think that, just figure out a way to get over that. Don't care what people think, unless it's like something hurtful to somebody. Don't be like, oh, I'm going to do this. I don't care if it hurts somebody else. You don't want to hurt people, but you don't want other people's opinions to, di to direct what you're going to do. Okay. I spent a lot of time. I see the end of the train. This is great. Next question was from Jake. He said, are you ever going to do a Tuesday evening workout video? You know, I've actually thought about like working on a video or something. And like the only reason I would want to do that is to kind of inspire people to do that. Because when you watch people working out, it makes you want to. Like when I watch Rocky, the training video, like the training part of the movie, it makes me want to just go work out like crazy or watching Dragon Ball Z training. It makes me want to. So that would be the only reason... I have thought about like working out or like doing something active in a video. And I'm gonna tie this in with Connor's question who said, you ever thought about doing per Periscope? I had thought about doing like, if I'm doing like a workout like a P90X3 or something, just doing a Periscope and saying, hey guys, I'm about to die here. Let's, uh, let's share this moment together and just like, you know, just be hanging out together. So I had thought about it. And with Periscope, I do have one so you can follow me there. I'm not sure when I'm going to do my first one, but I do want to do one at some point. Okay, next question was, Samantha, what is the hardest thing about being a YouTuber and what do you do to overcome it? The most difficult thing, and a lot of people, I don't know, it's hard to, it's hard to realize it until you experience it, but when you have a channel and you rely on it for your, your income and your livelihood, 
like it's always on your mind it's always even if you're not doing anything it's always on your mind like there's always something you can do so even if I'm taking a break even if I'm hanging out with friends or family or something there's always that nagging thought in the back of my mind like I could be doing something I could be doing something you know to help the channel I could be uh, you know coming up with ideas I could be researching new games I could be you know editing a video or recording a video or doing something and that's like always there, even when you're taking breaks. So, you know, that's one nice thing about a nine to five job. When you're done at five, at least for the most part, from then on, you don't gotta worry about anything. I, lo- I know a lot of times you have to bring your work home, but for a lot of people, you go home, you're done. And it's just a really nice load off and you need that. And it's difficult, it's difficult for me to have that. And my brother and I, we've talked about this. Like, it's difficult to have that complete, like, wind down you got nothing to do because there really is always there's always something you can do and that's kind of the hardest part but I love what I do so much that it's worth it you know so so yeah that's probably the hardest thing I'm working on it and the things I'm doing to work on it is I'm trying to figure out how I can get things done faster so I can have more free time this is something I've talked about for a long time and I'm doing two videos a day, two streams a week, and I'm realizing it might be too much, so I'm thinking I might have to like cut back on something. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but I'm real I'm strongly considering it. And it's a tough it's a tough decision for me, but uh, yeah, I gotta just figure something out to where I can have just a little bit more um, like recovery time because I don't wanna get burned out, you know, and you guys don't deserve somebody making videos who is burned out you know i want to give you guys the highest quality of stuff possible even if it means like just a few less videos or one less stream week or something i don't know um my goal is to just continue doing two videos a day two streams a week but we'll see we'll see but that was a really really great question and i really love what i do but no matter what you do even if you love it there's always challenges and you just work through it and you grow through it um, last question was Mike Jestic. I love that name. And he said, what did Mike Jestic say? Oh, um, did you, what made you want to start YouTube and did you have any other aspirations outside of like becoming a YouTuber before? So I picked this question because it reminded me my whole life I had no idea what I wanted to do. Like, Every, I feel like everyone in school knew what they wanted to go to college for, you know, knew what they wanted to do when they grew up. I had no idea. And I, I felt in the back of my mind, like, I know there's something. I know there's something that I want to do. I haven't figured it out yet. And YouTube was the first thing that I ever found that I really, really wanted to do. And I, I put my whole heart and soul into it. Three years later, I was able to go full time. And I couldn't do it without you guys. So... Like I say, whenever I talk about this, thank you guys so much for all your support. And as far as getting into it, you know, I I was watching YouTube videos and I don't know, just watching people, it, it kind of inspired me to want to do it myself, want to make a, an impact in the world. So um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what inspired me to start doing it. But guys, I got to get going. This is probably a really long video. Uh, hope to see you at the stream tonight. And yeah, thanks for joining me on this drive and I will talk to you later. That's in! Oh! Ah! Macho Man Randy Savage! Snap into a Slim Jim! Oh yeah! Now, Joe, Joe. <laughs> oh, dang it, man! I could have swore I was en route for an MVP 5! Fucking take!